you spend the winter all alone, yeah. Cause I don't please fall. Hello, friends. Today is Monday, the third day in the whole November. November. And we're reading. This is the third book in the Throwing Up Glass series. It is Smash's favourite book. This is the Smash made me do it. Um, friend recommends a series for you to read, vlogs, series situation on it. You know the drill. I'm really excited. This will be spoiler filled. I am happy and um, also scared. Smash will be getting thoughts and don't know how I'm going to feel, but I will update you as I go. Welcome to me losing my mind. Okay, not far into it. Literally, a couple of pages in, and we've met a guy called Rowan, who I've heard the name mentioned in relation to this series before, but because I've been trying to avoid as many spoilers as possible, I don't know what part he has to play in this whole situation. Does he become a love interest? Does he become like a brother in arms? Friend? Mentor? I don't know what part he has to play in it. I'm excited to find out, but also brooding. The silent brooding type. Did I like him? Probably not. Do I like him? Hell yes. I, I, as soon as he was like, she was describing him as he was walking up to her, I was like, he is so full of himself. He knows he's a good warrior. He knows his strength, but he's just like grumpy, just like, why do I like this type of person? In fiction only, I would like to just <laughs> state that I don't in real life like those kinds of people, but fictional men, silent, brooding, grumpy, like warrior rar yes yes please thank you thank you thank you and i don't know where this is gonna go but also i just messaged smash and i was like i just met a guy called rowan i'm hoping he's not a dick did i say dick or did i say twat one or the other let me have a gander at my message i just put i just met a guy called rowan googly eyes and then she put googly eyes back and then I a fair warrior, silent and brooding. Should I immediately like him? No, probably not. But I do. Please let him be a good guy, not a twat. Those are my first feelings, thoughts and ponderances about Mr. Rowan. Don't know his surname yet, but he's like a thousand year old fair. And who wouldn't like a brooding warrior thousand year old fair? Could never be me. That lies. We just appreciate Man on. She just comes out of nowhere and just savage. She is un savage. Iron teeth? Iron teeth. Iron tooth. Iron tooth witch. Is she good? Bad? Morally grey? I'm guessing she's going to sit in the morally grey area. But Adion, Adion, Adion. I don't like him, but I did message Smash and I was like, is he just an actual twat? Or does he have the facade of one and then underneath is actually a decent person and he's just got that facade on because he has the ring that basically means the king owns him and he has to do what the king bids. But he's fair as well. He's fair and he's under the king's control. Slave, is what I would say. I don't know. We've been being introduced to three new people in the first three hundred, in the first three hundred, in the first one hundred pages, and all three of them are very intriguing. Rowan gives me. I've already told you what he gives me. What vibes he gives me. Aiden. I'm, I'm unsure. Is he actually a cunt? I don't know. He might be a decent guy. Just facade and Manon the first time I meet her she's an absolute savage just killing people Fair, very, they, did, they did go to kill her they did think she was like a a, a witch beginning with a C but yeah 
she's just an independent woman just slicing up those twats I keep saying twat a lot I'll stop <laughs> should I be thinking of things when Rowan 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 when Rowan bites her and pins her against the wall. Should I be thinking things? No, she'd be like, Selena, run, Selena, Selena. Can you say Selena, 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 run. No. Um, I, I'm not thinking that. I'm not thinking run at all. I don't know <laughs> why my brain suddenly went to that. He snarled and growled and, you know, all the things. Not bothered. I, I, I really should be seeing it as like a, a threatening thing. My mind automatically goes elsewhere and then I'm like, Lisa, this is why. This is why. This is why. Just realise I haven't given you thoughts. So my thoughts, feelings and body images at the moment. Manon is still very much un savage and she's getting a wyvern. She wants the, the ball wyvern, the aggressive one, that literally just was like, ah! and then hit a person. Um, there's just, there's so much going on, and I don't know, I'm, I'm worried for Sasha. Sasha, Miss Healing Hands, who's had a thing for the prince for a few years now, and he's kind of like, oh, she's cute, and <clears throat> is, is she gonna get an alive that's the question because you don't cavort with what is this sorry this is the hair mask I've got in it's made my hair all curly and um, you don't cavort with like a commonance and she's she's not of like high noble bloody shit um so he can like mess around with poisons but mm, I don't know I don't know I've got a feeling that he thinks she's cute and she's infatuated him and then something might happen and then she might get unalived. And his magic was just like kaboom in front of her. And then she took the hit and was like, oh, I'm so clumsy, I dropped something. Are these thoughts coherent? No, no, they're not. I'm well aware that my thoughts are not like coherent actual updates on this. But Rowan saving. Selena, Selena, Aileen, 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 whatever you want to call her, the Queen of Terrison from the Skinwalkers. Ugh, they sounded awful, by the way. Ugh, nope, nope. But also the fact that she was like, I'm leaving, and he didn't leave her alone. Mm, okay, so once again, I have message smash my thoughts as they were presented to my brain. And I have, I have, I have questions, and I don't fully understand what's going on. Okay, so first off, can we just, can we just appreciate mental health rep? I don't, I know that when you look at it on a surface level, that these books are just about, you know, fear and fantasy and, you know, fun little, I say fun, a lot of it is pain, but you know, it's just like a fair way here, if you're going to look at it at surface level. But when you actually read, actually pay attention to what's being said and the feelings of the characters. Selena goes through a lot. The trauma that she went through in the first few books has started to hit her. So when she was, when Kale gave her the out to, to leave, to, to get away from the king. That was really nice of him, you know? And, you know, the, the fool in the king making him think that she's off to, like, killing people. Great, fun, fabulous. She's really off to get the word keys and find out what they mean and blah, blah, blah. But there's a trauma. <laughs> it's just a lot for her. She has left the guy behind that she loves. She's lost the, her best friend. And if you think that is hard enough as it is, but 
on top of what she went through and what she's been going through since she was a kid, you know, being taken, basically forced to be an assassin, otherwise she just wouldn't have lived. And then, whether or not you believe she was truly in love with Sam, even if she thought of him really as like someone she really deeply cared for, however, she's lost him. And then she went to Endovia. And then she was taken out of Endovia only to be enslaved to the prick that sent her there. She goes through all of that stuff and she slowly starts to trust somebody and becomes really close with a woman to find out that that person has also been lying to her but she's also trying to help people. So the, the conflict there is like she lies to me but she's also trying to help the rebels to you know, to to be against Adeline, it's it's kind of being against, go against the king and rebel against king. So they're doing good, but she's she's been lied to. But then that she sees her friend dead, and then she finds out the man that she loves has also been keeping things from her, and then she goes feral, and then a fairness comes out, and the look on his face initially was kind of like not great, and. I think that he still, despite the fact that he does still have feelings for obviously, I don't think they would be a good match because of the fact that I don't think he can ever fully accept that she's fair and I don't think he fully accepts that Dorian has magic because even though, again, he really cares about Dorian, he, it's, it's what he's been trained to think, isn't it? Um, I think he does really want to protect Dorian's is like, what, what do you, what, what's it called? Oh, what's it called? When you know something, you're like, well, don't tell me everything because I can like, claim that I don't know. Like, I'm not lying when I said I can't remember what it's called. If I remember what it's called, I will leave it down here. My brain is mush. I can understand why this is Smash's favourite book of this series so far because we very much get Selena and, you know, there's a bit of like a love thing going on in the first thing. We get to see more of Selena Assassin's Blade introduces her to a character and many different things. We, we, but this we get to the deep things. Like the deep thoughts. It's like she comes across as very vain but after everything that's happened to her she genuinely gives zero fucks about herself. She doesn't have any self worth. She is clearly depressed and struggling to function. I mean, we meet her at the beginning of the book where she hasn't washed in God knows how long. She's let herself lose weight. She's she's not caring for herself at all. That really struck me because when I'm going through my really low phases, self-care, and I don't mean like going for a mask and get my nails done, it goes out the window, basic self-care, it goes out the window, looking after yourself, feeding yourself, whether it's me not eating for the day or eating too much or um, not, it sounds gross, I'm sorry, but like not keeping myself clean and stuff, it's, it's things like that that the first to go when you, for me when you, you're really not doing okay and it doesn't brush over the fact that really bad shit's happened to her. It, addresses it and it's showing that even in a fantasy world when bad things happen it has an effect on this human and when she shifted when Rowan came to save her she'd realized that he'd come to save her so she did have to shift for herself you know if, if it was down to just saving herself she's admitted that she wouldn't have shifted but it's because his life also depended on it and that's why she shifted and that literally was just a gut punch and another like I was crying when when she was just like screaming at him like why can't your friend help herself it's like because she's dead oh my god when she screamed that in his face like when she was storming away that was horrible that made me cry and then the lump in the throat came when she was just like you know, your life was on the line as well, basically, which is why I shifted in, you already know. She's under the assumption, or he's given off the, the the vibe that he thinks she's worthless, so she's like, well, you've got me pegged there, I am. And I think of myself the way that you think of me. I don't think Rowan really hates her. I think that he's had this 
impression of her, like she smiled and blah blah blah. I don't know if he knows if if he knows that she's been to Endovia and because she hasn't really opened up to her or anything like that. Well, obviously you won't know because he's been a prick to her. But I feel like this is the wrong way to treat someone if you like them. Point blank period, absolutely not. But I think underneath it, he does, he does, he does potentially like her. Maybe not in a, I don't know if it's in a romantic way because it does mention that they are like distant cousins and I'm not sure how I feel about that. If the were to be a romantic thing. But then it mentions that Faze have mates. And I don't know if mate, Faze can mate with humans um, because if they can't, then Kale's out of the picture. Um, with the guys being alien, aliens mate. Um, but who could be Aileen's mate? Are the guys that we've met so far the only potential is Rowan? Or Adrian? A- Adrian? He could be one. He could be a mate. I don't know. I don't want him to be because although he's helping the rebels and yay, I knew there was another side to him. I knew. I knew it. Brain. I'm so glad that I found that because he was being too much of an arrogant prick. And we already had Roland for that. We didn't need another one. Even though Roland's not in this bit. But anyway, bye bye. Um, yeah. I'm going to go back and listen to this now. And come back with thoughts. Again, I'm so sorry if none of this is coherent. In any way, shape or form. But it's just, I've got a lot going on in the brain. And I need to verbalise a lot. And I just don't understand. The brain, mouth, not, not connecting well. I'm confused. I don't know who to trust. I don't know if I should like my nan. She's a savage, she's a witch, an iron tooth witch at that, and <laughs> should I really be liking them? I don't know, but the whole thing with her and her wyvern, or wyvern, however you want to say it, and the bonding, and now she wanted the big bull Titus, and then this little whippet of a, like, bear wyvern was, like, overpowered him, and that whole thing was just... The underdog coming through. We love to see it. I, <coughs> thoughts. <laughs> Rowan, I don't feel has been as harsh. Has, has been as harsh on Selena since the Skinwalker incident. Or oh, he doesn't seem to be that way. But he's he's not gone soft. <laughs> Sorry, he's not relented. With like training and stuff. Dorian and Kale just being distanced from each other because Kale was hiding things from Dorian and he walked in on him and Adrian and discussing like helping the rebels and stuff. And I'm really sad because they've grown up together. And I know there's like a prince and the King's Guard type of thing. And they're not well, they are friends but they're not, do you know what I mean? He has to protect the prince, but I don't know, and I'm not not liking the distance they have between them. Like, first it was Selena, and now it's Kale helping the rebels, and he's gonna get himself into trouble. And I don't know, and I, I'm not a fan. I don't trust the Sasha and Dorian situation. Don't trust it, I don't know why, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. I feel like something's going to go wrong. She's going to get unalived by his dad when he finds out that he's been convoyed with the healers. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then, I don't know who else I need to talk about. I'm really confused about my thoughts and feelings and ponderances of these people. I don't know who I should be rooting for. Obviously, definitely not the king. And I don't know if I want Adian, do I want, now that I know Adian is not... An absolute prick. Do I want him to get Selena? I mean, I mean, he's talking, to, talks about her. Or to me, it comes across like he's in love with her. Like they were supposed to be together. Um, but then he mentions that, the, that he was his cousin. What is it with like the the cousin thing? I don't know. I'm gonna go read some more. See if I can sort this mess in my head. But this is definitely one hundred percent. If I did six stars, this would be getting six. But I don't. So he just said he's not torturing her that much and he's making her go for like a 20 mile run and he's forcing her to shift. I didn't mention this whole thing that she saw when she was through like the trial thing and 
it was who she thought that she was coming into um gonna be encountering white the whites and it was actually this weird thing that came in I can't remember the name of it now. Um but this weird entity came and was like draining her and he said and Rowan said that he noticed that like she was paler, her freckles had gone. Um and these they've been finding these women that have looked like they've been like scared, literally scared to death. And the pale as anything and like they've got a frightened expression on their faces when they died. And they're investigating that, so it's a bit like a, a murder mystery thing going on here. I don't know what this has to do with everything else going on. So over here you've got Kale and Adian and finding out that Aileen's still alive and blah, 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 all this. And then connected to that but a bit different is like Dorian trying to come to terms with his magic. So then you've got this bit here and then you've got over here you've got Manon trying to train Wyvern, Wyvern, whatever you call them. And we've been introduced to this quite savage witch that seemingly doesn't have a heart but she did. She did help the, the Wyvern by chopping off Titus's tail, didn't she? So she does have a heart. And then up here we've got um, Selena and Rowan and she's out to do, you know, the word keys and all this but in order to, she's, but she's still not got to where she needs to go. She hasn't even got any information on the word keys or anything. She's still in the part where she has to prove herself. I know that it would be too convenient to just jump straight to that. But yeah, she's still in the process of having to prove herself. I don't know. I don't know about Rowan. Should I like him? Should I not like him? I don't know. But I'm enjoying this so much and I'm getting kind of tired but it is only quarter past nine. So I do want to listen to some more and I'm also off work again tomorrow. So I will finish this on the morrow. So you will see this vlog and the Assassin's Blade vlog quite close together. Have I been doing any of the videos other than vlogs recently? No, because brain isn't functioning. I have stopped the ball on so many things. I'll talk about that in a different video. Um, I do want to get back to doing other videos, like on my radar and stuff, and some sit down videos. But for now, I'll just have to put with my rambling weird thoughts about Sarah J. Mass. Really? Really? Rowan. Rowan going all like primal because she almost burned out and it's, I don't think his feelings are just platonic and I don't think her growing feelings are just that of like, I want to be friends. She was getting really possessive over him before she burned out and now she, he's getting possessive over her and it's apparently because she's left weaker now because she burn herself out by overusing her magic, letting it control her. But is it really? Or is it because they're opening up to each other and talking, forming a bond? She felt an ember spark. Is it like an ember spark? Like she's starting to put up again as like, oh, I want friends. Or is it the ember that sparked for him because he's a mate now? But they haven't noticed it yet. Mm. I'm sorry, good sir. What did you do? Did you form a blood oath with Aelin? She incinerated the Volk. Like, she incinerated the darkness with the fire. And she was just like, down in the depths, and, like, the, the brain. And it was just, like, she was like, no. And then like forcing, see there was a reason she was getting like all those stories about Maeve and it was because she was like piecing stuff together in her head so she could like use against her to free Rowan but then Rowan was like I bind myself to you. Does this mean the bound just like blood off and like the thing that snapped between them was like that because like she was bound in that way or like did they become fair mates? Did they become mated? Are they mated? Because I feel like the feelings that they've been feeling are maybe like more than 
more than more than more I don't know hello friends I've had time to ruminate to think to um gather my thoughts about air and fire let's just dive in shall we we shall I've had to take a breather so I watched Lucy um, talk about her engagement. If you don't know who Lucy Wood is, she's such a bean. She is one of the most <laughs> wholesome, down to earth, like, you could say bigger YouTubers that I watch. Um, she's just, yeah, she's just, she's great and she recently got engaged. And I was just like, this is so cute. She did a little QA and blah blah blah. Anyway, Air of Fire, this. This thing here had me in a chokehold. I said this part way through, but I can 100% understand why this is Smash's favourite book and why she reads parts of it again and again and again. And this is her most read book as well from the series. And I think it's a great book because once you've read the series, this is the this is a really good book to just. Be able, be, be able to read by itself because it takes you on a whole other like journey from where you were in the first two books I can I don't think I would really read Crowd of Midnight by itself but because this takes you on a whole other trajectory it it's just it's great <laughs> it's so so good we like the whole blood oath thing, Rowan, I still don't know whether that blood oath means anything more than what it's supposed to mean, if that makes sense. So, she's now accepted the fact that she is a queen and that she is Aelin Galathinius. Can't believe I said that right. She's accepted Rowan's blood oath because obviously Maeve is a bitch. She's a great character. She's a great villain, Maeve. Great villain. But she is a villain. What is going on with my hair? I don't know what's going on with my hair. I am really excited for the next books. I, I've got no idea where it's going to go, but I've got a feeling. And I know that in fantasy, it doesn't really matter if you're related and, you know, the whole cousins thing. And it did say the very distant cousins, but it still feels a very weird but also when Rowan and Selena were together you kind of feel they're more of a match it did sort of initially sort of hinted that K.O. was not okay with Selena being fair but then they actually said to Dorian they wanted everything to go back to where it was like he, he didn't he basically was saying he didn't want Dorian to have magic he didn't want Selena to have the fair side of her which means that he he loved the Selena he thought she was, not Aileen, who she actually is. And that to me is just a clear like line under it now. Like there's no going back to Kaol. There's absolutely no going back. But Dorian sacrificing himself and getting Kaol to run when the king just beheaded Dorian's partner. I mean he's not had any good he's not had great look with him and as a him and Selena were just not a good fit and I'm glad they didn't work out but then he ends up falling for Sasha and finding out she's like helping the rebels or she's a rebel because his dad is a malicious evil prick Um, he just beheads her and the, the, the emotion that went through me at that point when you could just in my mind I could see Dorian just breaking and I was not okay. I was really not okay. And the fact that Adrian also was just like, yeah, he knew that K.O. was going to step in and admit that he was part of it. But again, to save K.O. so that he could get the message to Aileen and, you know, oh, just sacrifices everywhere. Sacrifices everywhere. I don't know if Adrian's going to die. I don't know what's going to happen to Dorian and I'm really scared 
Um, I know that he's been coloured. He's, he's going to be tortured in it. He's going to be tortured and I'm going to not like reading the rest of these books. I, I, Doreen doesn't deserve to be tortured. He's been through enough. They've all been through enough. Like, Erlen doesn't need any more trauma. She's literally coming out of a depression and she's coming to terms with who she is. And, you know, Dorian has been, yes, he's a prince and yes, he's got privilege, but he's not grown up in a loving home, has he? Kale, yeah, Rowan losing his mate. The world, it's all just torture and drama and just, just trauma everywhere. Everywhere you look. And they all just deserve to be happy. Just separately. Kale needs to go back to, I keep forgetting where he's from. He needs to go back and find himself a woman. And I've got no idea what the hell is going to happen with Dorian. I love the fact that Ren is still alive. He's not a massive character in the whole in the whole grand scheme of things, but he's one of those characters you're like, oh, I don't want anything to happen to him. You know, like if he get, when he gets injured, like, oh, no, don't let him go. Like, don't let him die. Um... And I don't know why that is. It might not be a significant part of the book at all going forward. But obviously, Kale has now ran and found Ren and was like, yeah, Adrian sacrificed himself, but take it to the dungeons. And Manon, Manon's character arc in this book is perfection. She is introduced literally as a savage witch who. It was like it was in the iron teeth and she just like murder and heartless and it even says that she's been told that all the iron tooth witches are told that they are born without hearts but then she meets this bait woman that has like a spark in him and then she starts to feel things that she tries to save her enemy one of her enemies from the enemy enemy witch clans which covers whatever you want to call them, and a grandmother is such a heartless bitch. And you could say, you could you could sense that Manon is kind of slowly realizing that maybe she isn't heartless. Maybe it's just she's still a savage. Don't get me wrong; she's still a badass, and she will slice a bitch up with her teeth and claws. Like no questions asked. If you do something bad, but I have no doubt that she would like be gone. I just think that she's not as heartless as she originally thought she was and you can slowly see this thing but obviously I don't think she's ever going to be like the good girl or the good guy whatever you want to call them. I think she's going to be always going to sit in the precipice of like morally grey which I'm not mad about because I liked her when she was like savage and I like the care inside of her. I just loved seeing the bond between her and the women and her seeing the like potential in him and the fire beneath the fact that he looked like a weakling. He was like one of the runts and you know they let him, they let the other women like attack him and like she made him is like got his iron teeth like and got his his spikes on his tail had been like chopped off so she got him I wants to be like her and although she was like very aggressive when she was talking to him was like sort of like she's like move and stuff and like the way even the way she spoke to him was just she started to realise especially after the other um blue blood mentioned that um she could talk to Keela her with her and oh my god is it Iskia Iska whatever her name is fucking just Getting a woman to just go after the Gila and then a dying and then when she said when Manon saved her and then Keely like spread herself so that she could like save her and you know Keely understood that she was gonna die but she wanted her person to be saved. That I was not okay. I was genuinely not okay. I was not okay in a lot of this. I'm never okay. But this book made me really not okay. Anyway, this is my rambling. Does, is this ever... I don't think any of this is going to make sense. None of this is going to be coherent and I apologise, but it's still going to go out into the world and if you want to try and decipher what the hell I've been saying and 
if you get me, then let me know. Yeah, I really need a t-shirt just saying I'm not okay. Just in general. Just plop the t-shirt on. Maybe get rotating colours. Just to spice things up a bit. I'm just like, reading Sarah J Maas, I'm not okay. I'm going to make them. I'm not going to make them, but in my brain. My brain's telling me it's a good idea to make them. But anyway, that is me. If you do like me and you want to see more of me, please like and subscribe to all the good stuff. You've got a few more books in this series to go. Are you excited? I'd say that I am, but I'm also kind of nervous. If you're here and you want me to know you're here, but you don't want anything to say, please leave a black heart, so much appreciated. But I would love to hear your thoughts, feelings, and ponderances on the series to date. Obviously, I've not read anything past this book, but anything like Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, this book, Assassin's Blade, any thoughts on those books that you would like to share? Um, if you don't want to spoil the, in the comments, even though this is a spoiler vlog, yeah, then just leave them in the comments, or you can just message me one of my socials, they're all linked down below. I really need to discuss this with people, and I'm going to message smash my final thoughts. I will see you all very soon. Where will hopefully be okay? Wonder if you spend the winter all alone, yeah. Cause I don't please fall. I don't please fall. Yeah.